and welcome to the behavioral styles video. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through uh, the model that sits in this book here. It's called People Styles at Work. It's by Robert Bolton and Dorothy Grover Bolton. So Bolton and Bolton. Basically, they're uh, behavioral scientists that came up with a model they call the social styles grid that looks at and categorizes human behavior in order to help us understand who we are and the differences we have uh, with our peers. The reason they created a book called People Styles at Work is because there are so many issues in the working environment amongst teams. And a lot of those issues are around misunderstandings of people's behaviors and the judgments we make on others. What we often do as humans is we judge other people based on what we would do in that situation. So for example, I'm a fairly outspoken, assertive type of person. And so I think in a meeting, the smartest thing a person can do if they've got something to say is actually speak up. And so I judge that as the right thing to do, speak up, get it off your chest. Whereas some people think that that's actually very brash and irrational because you should consider what you say before you speak up. And so they might judge that as being a bit bossy, aggressive or hasty. And someone like me might judge someone who really holds their tongue and doesn't speak up as being too passive, as sitting on the fence, being wishy-washy, whatever it might be. The reality is we're all wrong, um, but we're also all right. Uh, it's just judgments, really. And so when we understand the differences in human behavior, the goal is to be able to flex our style and meet people where they're at. And I look at it as different languages. So I'm about to draw out the model for you and introduce you to the four different behavioral styles. What's going to be really fun and fascinating is for you to see which ones you identify with. And I would love you to, if you've taken any tests, if you go through this behavioral styles video with me and you resonate with any of the styles, I would love you to jump into the Freedom Academy group and just share with me a post or a video about what resonates with you and what you've learned about becoming aware of your different styles and strengths. So let's get into it, shall we? I'll bring up my iPad and there's our image from the last one. So we'll go to a new page and I'll make, actually I'll keep the, we'll keep the spotty background for this one. So in the behavioral styles model, which is referred to as the social styles grid, and, and by the way, this model is also the same as DISC, just different names. Oops, I need to move that down. Uh, the birds. And then sometimes it's the colors, um, behavioral colors as well. So what the social styles grid and what the behavioral scientists have identified is when it comes to human behavior, there are really just two continuums that we need to understand. So these continuums live within a quadrant. So I might just draw out the quadrant. Lucky we kept the, the dots. Um, I feel like I just need to tidy this up a little bit. Okay, so the first continuum runs horizontally. And this continuum really looks at our levels of assertiveness. So as a human, you could be either less assertive or more assertive. And you think of this as the assertive spectrum. So there are some people who will be way up here and some people that are halfway, some people are closer to the middle and some people down here. But let's talk about the differences, shall we? So a less assertive person, and this is a really important thing to understand. Number one, people are much more predictable than we think. So when we understand their behaviors, we can actually predict how they might show up rather than judge them for being wrong. But we go, oh, okay, that's because they're, they're prone to be less assertive rather than more assertive. 
there is no better or worse place to be. So less assertive isn't uh, meaning you're weaker and more assertive meaning you're stronger or less assertive doesn't mean you're kinder and more patient and more assertive means you're more aggressive and you're more bullyish. These are not about positives and um, aggressions. It's not aggression-based. You can be very passively aggressive or very um, uh, aggressively aggressive, you know, kind of outward and in your face about it. So let's look at what less assertive people do. They tend to ask more than tell. So if I was a less assertive person and I wanted to ask you out for dinner, I'm likely to say, hey, are you hungry? Do you feel like going out for dinner tonight? What do you feel like eating? Do you like Chinese or do you like Italian? What's your preference? And so we get our result by asking lots of questions. Very strong skill set to have as a coach, really important to be in that asking rather than telling. Whereas a more assertive person might say, hey, I'm hungry. You must be starving. Let's go get dinner. I think we'll have Italian tonight. You're good with that, right? And so a more assertive person tends to tell more than ask. A less assertive person will lean back and take their time. I don't know if you can still hear me here, but they'll lean back and they'll take their time to consider and make decisions. Whereas a more assertive person might lean right in and go, yep, done, boom, I'm decided, let's just do it. I'm ready to act. And so there's a speed here as well as a level. Less assertive people will probably be quieter. More assertive people might speak louder. Less assertive people are more likely to be reflective, do their homework, assess the situation, more assertive people are more likely to jump in and assess the situation once they're in it. They learn by doing and they decide on the fly. So you get the difference between the less and more assertive uh, styles there. I don't know why my iPad keeps dropping out. What I want you to do is, and you might even like to draw this up uh, for yourself, is what I want you to do is just plot yourself somewhere on the continuum. So if I was to plot myself here, I would sit about there. I'm fairly assertive um, and I'm very quick to make decisions. And in fact, a lot of the time I've made a decision or I'm in a meeting and we're talking about stuff and I'm literally taking the action as I'm deciding we're doing it. It can be very annoying for people who are trying to get my attention in a meeting because I'm so busy actually taking action and doing the stuff. I don't like to waste time. Um, all right, let's look at the next continuum. The next continuum is around your levels of responsiveness. So before I go into that, let me just sum up the assertiveness. It's basically the effort that someone will put into influence the actions and opinions of others. So more assertive people will put in a lot of effort to influence others. Less assertive people are quite happy to sit back, let others make their own decision. They're more focused on making their own decisions. So let's talk about the responsiveness. Less responsive uh, is up here. Whoops, let's write it straight so you can see it. Less responsive. And then we have the more responsive. And so responsiveness is the level that one outwardly displays or demonstrates their thoughts, feelings and emotions. So you might think of the less responsive people as your even keeled type person. You know when you ever when you meet people who they're just super cool, calm and collected, it's like they just never lose their shit. They seem to just cruise along and take it all in and nothing really rails them. Whereas the more responsive people are much more roller coastery, much more emotional. So less responsive, cards close to chest, don't show thoughts, feelings and emotions outwardly, doesn't mean they don't have them. And this is a big mistake some people make, myself included. Um, whereas more responsive people, hard on the sleeve, share what, what they're feeling, what their thoughts, their emotions are. They're much more animated. Think of this as task-focused and this as people. The thinkers 
and the feelers if you want. Now, here's where you can have some problems because the more responsive people can sometimes see the less responsive people as cold, uncaring, calculated, clinical, all those kind of, you know, it's like, God, they're like a a wet fish or they just don't seem to care about anything. They're so hard to read. I can't tell if they're loving it or hating it. Whereas the more responsive people to the less responsive people look like, oh my God, they're so dramatic. Like, do they have to share everything they're going with? One minute they're happy, the next minute they're crying. I don't know how to deal with this person, you know? And and so we can have these judgments around each other. We can also have admirations where the responsive, more responsive people will go, you know, I love how they just keep it all together. They just cruise along and they just don't seem to lose their lose their stuff easily. Whereas the less responsive people might look at the more responsive people and go, you know what, they're so magnetic. They really know how to connect and bond with people. They're such a people person. I wish I could be a little bit more like that. And so again, we're not looking at these in order to try and change you or say one is better than the other, but say, what are you by nature? What do you do without trying? Because we all have a default position. And so again, I want you to plot yourself. Are you less or more responsive? And so I sit somewhere around here. And that puts me in this quadrant here. Now, there are layers to this. And if you go through the book, you'll realize that in each quadrant, there is another quadrant. So you have what they call backup styles, but you also have a predominant style. And so my predominant style, I actually live not there. I sit right about here. So this is Jody. Um, my uh, predominant style in this quadrant is what's known as the expressive. Now, I'll do it in blue. And in disc, it's also the I, the influencer. So the expressive is your big picture thinker. Expressives are the kind of people who love to go blue sky mining. They love to work with a blank canvas They're very good at coming up with ideas on the fly. They're fun at parties. They're charismatic. They're people, people. They're the visionaries. They are great starters and often lousy finishers. Expressives suck at the detail. They get bored with doing the same thing and they don't like routine. They much prefer spontaneity, dreaming, designing, visionaring, starting, Um, and they're often very quick to get things going, but sort of fail to finish things off properly. So that gives you a good idea of the expressive. And when you're starting out in business, if you're an expressive, you're going to be you're probably going to have no problem coming up with big ideas and visions and imagining it and going, "Yeah, I can see it. I can believe it. I can feel it. I'm I even can sell it to other people." Um, but you may fall down when it comes to actually implementing and getting things finished because you keep starting new ideas and you keep coming up with new things. So that's the expressive. Up here is the driver. So the driver is like the expressive. They like to get things done. Their motto is just do it. But unlike the expressive, they're much less responsive, which means rather than selling the story, the vision and the feelings that go with the big picture ideas, they want to sell the results. Just do it. Let's let's focus on actions. Don't bore me with your detail. Talk in bullet points to the driver. Drivers can't stand long-winded, fluffy stories, excuses, wishy-washy ideas, long paragraphs of procedures and policies. They want everything in bullet points. Keep it short, keep it sharp, keep it concise. Then over here, we have the uh, analytical. When I'm um, teaching this in class, I'll often write anal up on the board. Everyone cracks up laughing. And then you finish the word analytical. I think that's how you spell it. Um, But the analytical... And this is the D, obviously, in the disc. This is the C in the disc. The analytical is 
your detail orientated person. Less assertive means they like to research, they want to get it right. This is where your perfectionist can live sometimes. They're very task orientated, like the driver, they want facts, they want figures, they want logic. The worst thing you can do with analyticals is try and pump up their tires, try and win them over with compliments because they'll just think that that's sickening. They won't see that it's authentic. What analytical people want is facts, figures, logic and reality. They also think it's very important to do your homework and to dot all your I's and cross all your T's and make sure that we have the data in place before we make any rash decisions. Analytical people are the types of people that will build the spreadsheets. You know, I had a friend who was in uh, analytical tendencies and we all bought canoes one year. So a group of us in our friendship circle went out and bought canoes and she had a spreadsheet for canoes, like the buying criteria, the different providers, and, and she did all her homework and outlaid it in a very analytical way. She's a project manager by trade. And then finally, we have your amiables. So the amiables are less assertive like the analyticals. They like to think, they like to do their homework. They don't like to make rash decisions. But like the expressives, they're more about the people than the task. So they'll do the homework and the research focused on, is this good for our people? Amiable people are like uh, what we would call the unsung heroes. They want to bring everyone along for the journey. They're very inclusive. They're very considerate. They're an excellent team player. They'd much rather be behind the wings, working in the muck with the team rather than front and center on the stage, selling the story or being the showman. The expressive is the like, yep, happy to take the center stage and happy to make it all about me. Don't bore me with the details. The amiable is the great, really want to bring everyone along for the journey, make sure it's an inclusive experience. The driver is let's make sure it gets done efficiently and fast in the most economical way. And the analytical is let's make sure that when we do it, we do it correct, we do it exact and we do it perfect. And so what's really interesting is when we understand these different styles is we can look at how do we show up to the task of building a business? So a driver might end up getting a little bit impatient and thinking, you know what, I just want to get into it. I don't want to have to fluff around with my life plan and my marketing plan. I just want to start making money today. Just tell me how I can get to that point straight away. Whereas the expressive is going to want to come up with the big ideas, paint the visions, the plans, the boards, the images, share the, share the concepts, really nut it out. The amiable is going to want to feel fully supported, like they're not doing it on their own, like they're working as part of a, a collaboration or they're feeling like they're part of a community and growing it together with other people. And they're also going to look out for everyone else in the community. Whereas the analytical wants to stick to the detail, the facts, the figures and go, you know what, I just want to make sure that I'm doing it correctly, that I'm getting all of the answers right, that I'm doing the homework Jody set me and I'm doing it in the appropriate and correct way. So where they could go wrong? Well, the analytical could suffer from analysis paralysis or perfectionism. Too much time trying to get it perfect, trying to get it right or too much time doing their research and homework, sorry, my um, screen just disappeared, and not enough time just taking action. So the analyticals, if you land in the analytical, they need to step up and be a little bit more bold and just take the risk, just bloody take action. The drivers might be like a bull at a gate and jump in to get stuff done, but might have a little bit of impatience and be tough on themselves if they're not getting results fast enough because they think, I should be here by now. It should be easier than this. It should be happening much faster. Um, so the drivers could tend to get a little bit impatient and then they might start to either beat themselves up or see that it, it all is a waste of time and go back to something that they know and trust they can get results with. The expressive might end up having too many ideas and start too many things again and again and never actually implement any of them. 
And the amiable might get caught up in worrying about what everyone else is doing, comparing themselves to how good the others are going and going, oh God, I could never be as good as them. And oh, how do they be so good and I be so crap, you know? Um, and so each of them have these areas or these Achilles heels that can hold them back. But at the same time, they also have some great strengths that can propel them forward. So when it comes to doing market research and being organized, analyticals are probably going to come up with some really great structures and systems around how they build their business. When it comes to sorting out the tech stuff with Marty, the analyticals are probably going to shine in the back end saying, right, I actually love building funnels and systems and working out the nitty gritty because it's really up their alley. When it comes to actually hitting the targets on the board and making stuff happen and, and reaching those leveling goals, the drivers are probably going to excel because drivers are like, I don't care what it takes. I'm shooting for a target and I don't want to miss, you know? When it comes to building a brand that's exciting and telling stories and getting people on board with their vision, the expressive is really going to excel. So they're going to create this energy and it's excitement where everyone's going to go, oh my God, your business is so cool. And when it comes to actually being that trusted advisor or that trusted brand that people just want to connect with and be around and say, you know what, I really want to collaborate with this person or I really want that person on my team because I trust them and I feel like they're so kind and they would have my back, that's the amiables. And so the beautiful thing is you have a little bit of all of these in you, some more than others. And, you know, if you do the DISC survey or the bird survey, by the way, if you want to know the birds, this is the uh, eagle here. This is the peacock <laughs> here. The amiable is the dove, all about the peace. And the owl is the analytical, all about the wisdom, the wise ones. You can do the free surveys um, and see where you land. But I actually think it's really nice to know that essentially if you understand if you are less or more responsive and you can start observing others around you, if they are less or more assertive and you are less or more assertive, you can very quickly and easily identify where someone sits and start to develop language around them. You know, I often say when I'm teaching this in the corporate world that when we travel and we go to countries that English is not the first language, the best way to, to get around is to learn the, the basics. You know, just learn to speak a little bit of where's the bathrooms, where's the bus stop, how much does this cost, thank you, hello, goodbye, good morning, can I have my dinner please, whatever it might be. So you want to learn the basics of that language wherever you go, because it makes your traveling journey or adventure much easier. It's the same with understanding the behavioral styles. I'm not asking you to go and necessarily get the book and read it. If you do work in the corporate world, this is good stuff to understand. But instead, what I'd like you to do is just identify with where you sit, maybe take one of the free surveys and recognize that, right, as an expressive or a driver, an analytical or an amiable, there are certain strengths that you bring to the table. There are certain things that you do without trying. Let's build your business and leverage those strengths so that it always feels easy rather than hard to get where you want to go. The final thing that I would say about this is, you know, the behavioral styles is not about how you see yourself. It's about how others see you. So when it comes to understanding the behavioral styles, it's really important to be able to really check in with what do you do without trying? So I'll give you an example. When I uh, started learning to become a coach, I realized how hard it was for me to ask questions. I'm a natural teller and I'm a naturally very highly assertive person. However, I've flexed my style and I now know how to operate all the way down this end where I can be much less assertive, I can sit right back and I can practice. I can do that, but it's not my default. It's not what comes naturally. It's a developed strength. My natural style is to be more assertive. 
And so as you go through this, you will find that you've either at times been less responsive and learned to come out of your shell or been a really uh, responsive person who expresses yourself and gone through something and then learned to go into your shell, whatever it might be. And again, remember, there's no right or wrong here. But I want you to really become aware of how do others see you and what do you do without trying? Because that's where the answer is. So when it comes to talking about your feelings and sharing with people what's on your mind and even how you use body language, do you find it easy to talk with your hands or do you find that you're fairly hard to read? Do people say you're fairly hard to read or that you're very demonstrative? When it comes to connecting with others, do you make decisions quickly or slowly? Do you find you ask a lot of questions or do you jump in and start deciding and telling? These are the sorts of things you want to consider. All right, that's it for this uh, model. Have a play around with it if you want. Um, this is a great book, People Styles at Work. In the next video, I'm going to take you through just a very quick overview of understanding um, the Myers-Briggs type indicator. The free tool that we share with you is the 16 personality profiles. I'll put the disc link down here again um, and you can take that as well. I'll see you in the next video.